Uniform continuity, okay. Uh, equivalent ways in terms of sequences. Every continuous function on a compact set is uniformly continuous. Here is one a more example of uh, continuous functions, which uh, you may find is useful. Uh, okay. A function. Uh, you may come across these things in some other courses, so let me introduce that. A function f from a domain D in R n to R is said to be Lipschitz. Li a mathematician who first gave this definition, so goes by his name, is said to be Lipschitz if uh, For every x y belonging to the domain D, if I look at the distance between the images, that is less than or equal to some alpha times uh, x minus y for some alpha. So, we have got the distance between images of any two points right is bounded by the distance between x and y for some constant alpha okay so sometimes one says it is uh, lipschitz of order alpha or so doesn't matter actually some power sometimes but this is the simplest kind of uh, lipschitz function you can think of so claim F Lipschitz, F uniformly continuous. Is that okay? Because it directly gives a measurement between distance between x, f x, f y, and x and y. So if x and y are close, obviously f x and f y are close, obviously. Or if you like if a sequence x n y n goes to 0, then f of x n minus f of y n will go to 0. Either way, you can look at it and say this is a class of functions which is uh, uniformly continuous. There are many other uh, useful results uh, because the domain is compact. Uh, okay, probably I should, yeah, I think it is okay. Let me, let me state one more probably and prove if Okay. So, let us say f is from D contained in R n to R such that f is 1 1, D is compact. The main is compact and the function is given a 1 1 function. Okay. If the function is 1 1, then on the range there is an inverse function available. Right? Every 1 1 on to function has a inverse from the range to the domain. So, that function is normally called f inverse from the range f of d to d. Right. So, what is the inverse function? X point x goes to y. So, inverse function is you bring y back to x from the range back to the domain. So, you can think of as composition of these two being identity map. Okay. F composite f inverse is identity map on the set D. The claim is is continuous if f is continuous. So, what we are saying is if the domain of a 1 1 function 
is continuous, then the inverse function automatically is a continuous function. So, let us prove that. Okay. So, proof. So, what is to be shown? So, let y n converge to y n d in f of d. I want to show inverse function is continuous. So, what is the domain of the inverse function? That is f of d, the range. So, take a sequence there y n converging to y, show that the image converges to the image to show f inverse, uh, f inverse of y n converges to f inverse of y. So, that is to be shown. So, the and what is given to us? The domain is compact and the function is continuous. So, from the range somehow we have to come to the domain because something about the domain only is given. And how can I come back? Because y n and y are in the domain, they should be the images of something in the, they are in the range. So, they should be image of something in the domain. So, let us write that. So, let x n x belong to d such that f of x n is equal to y n and f of x is equal to y. So, x is the pre image of y and x n is the pre image of x y n. So, now x n and y n are x n is in the domain, x is in the domain, right. So, now since x n belongs to d and now here comes our compactness d compact implies there is a subsequence a subsequence of x n see how compactness always gives you nice properties x n such that x n k converge these right x n k will converge somewhere x n is only a subsequence converges somewhere let us call it as say x naught in d right f continuous will imply what? f of x and k converges to f of x naught. But what is f of x and k? That is y and k, right? because x n is the pre image of y n and where does y n converge? We are given y n is convergent to y. So, that implies what? y n k. So, that converges to y because y n converges to y. So, what we should have? On the other hand, it should converge to f of x naught, okay, and this y is equal to f of, okay, f x. Uh, let me also let us also uh, uh, write, uh, okay. Actually, this, yeah, okay, is y. So what we want to show, we want to show f of x is equal to y. So what we have gotten, so implies f of x naught is equal to y, right? this converges this, this also converges to y. So, we have gotten this. Can I say x is equal to x naught? Can we say x is equal to x naught? Why? 
I know f of x is equal to f of x naught, f of x is equal to x naught, but function is 1 1. We have not used that fact anyway, right? No, f of x naught is equal to f of x, right? Because x and k converges to x naught, continuity implies f of x and k will converge to f of x naught, but uh, this also converges to right f of x, uh, x y is equal to f of x what is y y is equal to f of x right so these two are equal so implies x is equal to x naught because f is 1 1 right f is a 1 1 function so x must be equal to x naught so what we are saying that y is equal to f of x right that is what we wanted to show So, hence f inverse is continuous, right? So, it is a continuous function. So, that is one consequence of uh, saying it is. Uh, uh, I think I should make a remark, probably you should try to remark d compact. is cannot be removed so what does that mean in this theorem we had the condition right d is compact that condition if the domain is not compact even if the function is 1 1 inverse need not be continuous so try to construct an example otherwise in the tutorial class we will discuss it Okay, All right. So, what more one should say? Okay, I think enough of uniform continuity. Let me uh, also come back uh, uh, to the concept of connected subsets of Rn that I said we will do it later. So, I think this is the right stage to look at connected subsets in. So, recall let us just because uh, we did it some time back. So, let us recall a subset x contained in R n is called connected. I am just recalling if x does not have a separation. So, what was the meaning of saying x does not have a separation? That means, x cannot be written as a union b, a b non empty, a and b separated. Right? If a set can be written as a disjoint union, it can be partitioned into two parts. Not only partition, if that is a separation, then we say the set is disconnected. If no such thing is possible, we say it is connected. The typical example was that of an interval. Interval is a connected subset of the real line, because whenever you try to cut it into two parts, right? one part and the other part they will be disjoint. You can cut it into two parts, but they will not be separated. Separated means that every point has a neighborhood which does not intersect the other set. And keep in mind neighborhood, okay. in R n, okay. so, uh, and we said this is also equivalent to saying that there does not exist any set u which is not empty which is proper subset of x u both open and close so this is equivalent to saying there does not exist any subset 
of x which is both open and closed right because if it is both open and closed this and its complement in x will give us a separation right if not so it will be separation but one thing i should uh, make it slightly more clear which may not be that clear what is meaning of saying u is open in x u is a subset of x right so u open in x is same as saying it is v intersection u v open in rn it is part of the part of an open set in rn for see for example if you take a, a open uh, take a set which is open interval right saying this is an open set i can say it is an open set if i look it as a subset of r real line whole thing but can i say a part of it say this is 0 to 1 and let us like it 0 to 1 by 3 can i say 0 to 1 by 3 is open in 0 to 1 yes but supposing i close it here i take the closed interval okay now can i say that 0 to 1 by 3 is an open subset of the closed interval is open in 0 to 1 it is it is open in 0 1 close but not open in the whole thing because i can write this as a intersection of a bigger open set intersection 0 to 1 so that kind of thing you should keep in mind is saying something is open in a subset means it is intersection of an open set in the whole space with that set okay because okay let me let me say why so let, let us just illustrate this a bit more i am saying that 0 to 1 by 3 is open in 0 to 1 what does that statement mean let us just elaborate it more if i want to go back to this and look at in terms of uh, interior points right so for every x belonging to 0 to 1 by 3 what should i have i should have a ball right around this so there exists okay so if x belong then let us look at say uh, uh, minus 1 to 1 by 3 intersection with 0 to 1 is a subset of uh, this point x belongs to this uh, 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 okay not this one uh, let me just uh, write slightly more better let x belong to this okay then x belongs to say uh, minus 1 to 1 by 3 right obviously so here is 0 here is 1 by 3 here is minus 1 right but i can still say x belongs to minus 1 to 1 by 3 okay intersection if i look at its intersection with 0 to 1 okay which is a subset of 0 to 1 see what we are saying is whatever be the set in r or in rn what is the meaning of saying that you are looking at open balls in that set that set may not have the whole ball as of rn inside it but it is the intersection of a open ball in rn with that set that is what we mean so you can think it as a subset or subspace you can think of so that is the mean difference between is saying some a is a subset and a is a subspace of rn as far as the distance is concerned right so what are open sets in a subset they are intersection of open sets in the bigger 
intersected with that set. Okay. So, in that sense you should think of both open and close. Okay. So, for example, uh, let me just keep that discussion a bit more. For example, if I look at the interval 0 1, I am saying is open in 0 1. It is open in 0 1, right. Is it okay for everybody? It is like whole space is always open in itself, whole space is also closed in itself. Okay. So, this because this uh, way of looking at things helps to later on to define many things in uh, higher uh, courses. So, let me see what, what I wanted to do was the following. So, here is uh, uh, a theorem which is very useful. Let x be a subset of R n. The following are equivalent. I am going to describe connectedness in terms of functions 1, x is connected and second, if f is a function from x to two points at 0 1, is continuous. then f is constant, f is f is a constant function. So, let us just understand the statement, it is saying if it is saying a set is connected is equivalent to saying that if you have got a function on x which is continuous and takes possibly only two values 0 and 1 that is not possible if x is connected. It should take only one of the values either 0 or 1. It should be a constant function. So, continuous functions on connected sets cannot take two different values, right. Only one value is possible. It should be a constant function. 